What's going on, YouTubers, gamers, and fan and hobbyists? So welcome to this week's episode of P and Q, the question and answer series, where you get to ask me questions or put comments to me, and then I respond to you the following week. Now you can do this one of four ways: comments or questions down below, which is the most common way. You can email me at miniwarzone at gmail.com. There'll be a link in the video description below, and that'll give you an anonymous response. Or if you make a video yourself, you um, ask a question on there, and I think, oh, I'd like to answer that. I'll answer that here too. Or if we meet in person. And that's it, that's the four ways of doing it. Right, now just to clarify, I record these um, most often on a Friday, unless real life gets in the way and then I'll do it over the weekend, but it's always done before Monday. Uh, so try and get your questions in before then if you can. That's It's not a major problem because I can still pick them up. But uh, just bear in mind, uh, usually I record on a Friday and then schedule to upload on the Monday. So it's a beautiful day today, the sun is glorious, um, people are cutting their grass, so you know if you can hear the noise in the background, it's someone's uh, mower basically. <clears throat> now I have two video questions and the rest are I think from last week's show or the week before, um, <clears throat> we'll come on to it. So we'll start with the video questions first, I think I've covered all the preamble, anyway. First one comes from... Um, Beer 40 k on his Q&A series, he asked a question on it, and he said, he asked, what is your most favourite army you would never collect? I was thinking about this, um, you know, from the way I saw it, and I thought, pretty much instantaneously, uh, Dark Eldar would be the most favourite army I would have, but I would never collect them. And the reason I wouldn't collect them is because they look too breakable. Uh, spindly sharp edges that snap off that kind of thing it kind of puts me off a bit uh, uh, you know for storage and whatnot uh, odd shapes that kind of thing I, I mean I may be wrong you can you can you know correct me if I am wrong there Let me just adjust the camera I look a bit weird there oh, that's a bit better I think um, yeah so you can correct me if I am wrong but that, that is my answer dark elder Right, now the next video question comes from, now I don't know if it's DZ Saber or DZ Saber, depends whether you're um, English or American I guess, uh, as to what your pronunciation of that would be, um, on his Q&A, his April Q&A, and he asked, where do you get your inspiration for colour from for a given model, where do you get your ideas? Um, I suppose, hmm, I'll have a sip of tea for this one. When it comes to 40k, a lot of the time I'll look at artwork, box art, that kind of thing. Um, White Dwarf, uh, see what other people have done on there, see what I like the look of the best, see what fits in. Other times, because a lot of models I have which aren't GW, I'll, I'll sit and look at the model, stare at it for a few minutes, you know, talk to the model as it were in my mind, trying to visualise what would be best. Try and I look at the unpainted model, and then I visualise what would that look like with a, a blue colour scheme or a green colour scheme or a red colour scheme and so on. And then I I come to that, I mean then I think, okay I'll try this. And it doesn't always work. Most of the time it does, but that's how I go about it. So that's a great question there. Right. <clears throat> now I have a question from Capitan Morgan's War Games. Now I believe these were, yes, asked on the previous, the week before last. Um, so it was asked after the Friday, but that's okay. I can still pick up the questions. Um, and the question is, what's your favorite sweet or dessert from childhood? Thinking about that one a lot too. For me, I would say, um, I forget what they were called. They were like um, a sponge roll with ice cream and jam in the middle. Does anybody know what they were called? Um, yeah, like a sort of log uh, cake thing. I'd like sponge on the outside, with like ice cream in the middle, vanilla ice cream, and then just around the edge of the ice cream was like jam. So uh, whatever that was called. Um, yeah, that was my favorite um, dessert as a child. Um, and I always used to get it when I used to go and stay with my aunties. So, um, yeah, some good memories for that one. <clears throat> okay. 
Capitan Morgan's War Games again asks, so what's your favourite faction to paint, build or convert? Well, I don't have a favourite faction for building, that's all the same. Painting would be whatever my flavour of the moment is, but converting I think it's got to be orcs. Orcs would be my favourite conversion models because you can just do so much with them. They were the army that were made for conversions and I'm not a very good converter but uh, it's fun nevertheless so I'm going to say orcs. Great question. Right, Edic Beer 40 k on the last week's show says, forgot to say, I am a big fan of Windsor and Newton brushes and I've just started using Atris Opus, the Atris Opus set I unboxed. I, I watched that and so far they seem really good. Um, if you could do a kind of an update on it, uh, you know, after you've been using them for a while, uh, because it's not always easy to ascertain whether something is good from the off, like straight away, because you need a bit of time to use it and get, see how, you know, well it holds up against, like, say, your traditional, like your Windsor and Newton brushes. I'd be very interested in uh, seeing what you make of them after a, you know, a month or two, maybe, of using them. See what your thoughts are then. I'd be very interested in seeing that. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, Eric Beer 40 k again says, great answers. Pete, what do you think of fancy themed chess boards? Oh, that's a good question. Whenever I see them, I think, wow, they look awesome. But when it comes to playing the actual game, there is nothing that beats the original set. I'm with you exactly, 100%. I used to have a Star Wars chess. I mean, I have loads of different chess sets. And I love the different styles you can get. But I like the different styles that fall within the realms of classic chess. Does that make sense? A classic chess set, and I don't mind the kind of like uh, the the, the Nor Normandic ones and, and all that kind of thing, where they they're kind of like I saw a great one at a charity shop the other day, and I if I had had the money, I would have bought it because it was thirty pounds. But the pieces were like this big, and they were like carved like you know like busts of. Um, like um, like Normans and Vikings and, and that kind of style. Uh, they look really good. But I agree. I, I mean, the, the classic chess set for me is the one I like to play on. As long as they're nice, big, chunky pieces, you know. Um, they're the one. They're my favourites. And I like wooden ones. I like thick, chunky plastic ones. As long as there's a bit of weight behind them, I love that. Uh, yes, I agree with you. Nothing beats the original set, and it doesn't. But I, like I said, I was saying, I, I used to have a Star Wars one. When I saw it, I, I got it. I thought, wow, this is brilliant. But playing it uh, didn't really do it for me. I wasn't really that much of a fan. I didn't get the same sense of enjoyment playing the game. And yeah, it's okay for a collector thing on the, on the shelf or whatever. But um, no, I prefer the uh, classic ones myself. Great question. Right, Super War Gamer is next. He says, nice video. Can't wait for the new airbrush video. Smiley face. Well, they're there. Ba ding ba ding If I remember, I might not. Don't always remember to do those links, but uh, yeah. They're part of my airbrush for beginners series. Now, if you haven't seen it, check out my airbrushing for beginners series. Um, I, I really enjoy making that series. <laughs> um, Battles in a Blue Shed. Says great pink hue. Question: When you started airbrushing, did you go for the more expensive brush first, or start with a cheap eBay model? Um. Well, I bought my air. My first airbrush came with my first compressor, which was a cheap eBay model. Uh, but very, very shortly after, and I'm talking within the same month or within a few weeks at least, I bought my Badger Patriot 105. So I've kind of had those the same amount of time. So, yeah, that's what you get used to. I, I have my preferences over airbrushing. Um, do I think it makes a difference? Not really. I would advise starting with a cheap one just for expense reasons, really. I mean, if you could afford it, go for the, you know, the good ones. Um, but, you know, start with a cheap one and, you know, you can't really mess it up. So it's just what you get used to the feel of, the weight, and it, it all plays a factor. Because if you're airbrushing for a long time, 
you know the weight makes a difference and how you hold it it does um, it's one of those things you really have to experience rather than have it explained to you it's similar to brushes I suppose yeah, if you're painting you know like I prefer the army painter ones with the triangulated handles because I like the feel of those over any other brush so yeah I would go for those but um, yeah I would recommend a cheap eBay model one first purely for the uh, financial side of it and if you get on with that or you think you might be able to do better with a more expensive one but you're getting used to it they're not for a more expensive one have a look at them look at the reviews another question do you fit your own paints for airbrushing um, or use airbrush ready paints both absolutely use both um, sometimes I will thin down airbrush ready paints as well just you know a drop or two um, just that little bit more but you can you can use any paints in an airbrush and you can use the airbrush thinner why do you get it to the right consistency um, yeah you can't go wrong really so yeah good questions thank you very much William Kuby says sound good to me uh, post I will see so yeah I will be posting more and finally black country wargamer says I remember some time ago you mentioning wanting to play a pirate game have you ever considered blood and plunder or frost grave frost grave ghost archipelago is that how you pronounce it Ar archipelago archipelago um, Blood and blood. No, I've got one called On the Seven Seas. I've got a, a rule set called On the Seven Seas, so I, I will probably be using that one um, when I get around to it. It's another one of those things I will get around to. I've got some pirate models, but I just you know I haven't painted them or anything, obviously, and I don't have any terrain for it or suitable playing area. You know, need to simulate water, don't you? So I'd need I know, start off with a blue felt thing or something to start with, and I'd work on that. Um, so I haven't considered Blood or Thunder. Frostgrave, this, the whole Frostgrave thing like, doesn't appeal to me. Um, and anything with a name that I can't pronounce, that doesn't appeal to me either. Um, it just doesn't. But um, I'm sure it probably is a great game, but it's just not for me. The name doesn't attract me, make me want to look at it further at all. Um, don't know why. I just, I'm just a bit meh by the whole thing. But yeah. Blood and Plunder, who knows? I mean, I'd give, uh, you know, on the Seven Seas ago, I think, nah, I need something else. And Blood and Plunder could be another one I could go for. Great question. Thank you very much, everyone, for your questions. Look at the time. You know, it's not too bad. A um, little bit quieter again this week. Um, not so many views on it. Uh, for whatever reason. I usually get more views in the summer than I do other times. So, hmm. But... You know, if you like the series, at least share share the video if you can out there with uh, wh whatever platforms you're on. That would be cool if you could share it on your like Twitter or Google Plus thing, and I could reach a further audience and kind of try and get out there. Do you know what I mean? And um, get more questions, more interaction. Thank you very much. That would be awesome. I'll say thank you very much for watching. Remember, all brushes lead to war, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.